This is Betsy Jensen, and you are listening to Unstoppable Body and Mind, episode 56, Trying On New Thoughts. In this podcast, we learn to upgrade our brain and understand the power of our thoughts to heal and to create the results we want in our life. Become the person in control of your healing and make peace with your life. Become unstoppable, body and mind. Hello, my loves. Today, I want to talk to you about the concept of trying on new thoughts. But first, I want to announce that I'm doing a drawing for a $100 Amazon gift card. If you have been listening to the podcast and liking it, please go over to iTunes and give it a rating and review. There, you can take a screenshot and email it to me for an entry, actually two entries. If you do a rating and you do a review, that's two entries. And if you follow me on Instagram, you can screenshot that too for a third entry. So a possibility of three entries per person for rating, reviewing the podcast and following me on Instagram. You can send that to my email, which will be in the show notes. The drawing will take place at the end of April, so get those submissions sent in. All right, so trying on new thoughts. Last week, I talked about cognitive dissonance, which is the difficulty, actually the mental, psychological, and emotional stress that is caused by holding two competing beliefs. When you're realizing that the thoughts that you're thinking are not serving you, maybe even causing you pain, you may want to think some different thoughts on purpose. But sometimes those thoughts are not quite believable to your brain. And that's where trying on new thoughts might come in. I like to imagine it almost like you're going into a dressing room. And some of the thoughts that you're trying on you might really want to believe, but might not feel super comfortable for you yet. So you could imagine some outfit that's not something you usually wear, but you're starting to see how it might fit you. It might look good on you, might be better for you than what you already have. You're starting to imagine that maybe this could be an outfit that you would wear. Now you'll know a thought is serving you by how it feels in your body. And that's going to be the ultimate test on whether these thoughts that you're trying on are good ones for you or not. So this is how you'll know if you have thoughts that aren't serving you. If you are thinking a thought, even if it might be true, but it causes you a lot of pain physically or painful emotions, then it's probably not a thought that you want to keep thinking in that same form. For example, if you are thinking about your childhood and you're thinking it shouldn't have happened that way, your parents should have shown you more love. They should have been more caring or attentive. Then that thought may be very painful to you. You may believe that it's true, you might find evidence for it, but it still may hurt when you think it. Now, Byron Katie says that thoughts are painful to us when they're not true. So if you have that painful thought that my parents didn't love me, you might look for examples of ways that they did love you. And you can see that the story that you're telling isn't maybe totally true and encompassing everything that happened. Thoughts can be painful because they contradict reality. So if you think that something shouldn't have happened the way that it did, you're always going to have some suffering because the truth is it did happen that way. You're thinking a thought that's in contrast to reality, which will always cause you pain. So even if you have great evidence of the way you were treated and the way that you think you should have been treated, it doesn't change the past. And so thinking that things should have been differently might be something very, very painful. If it is a painful story to you now, 
you are able to explore the thoughts you have about what happened and rewrite your story in a less painful way. Sometimes it helps to consider that the people involved could not have really done it any differently based on the experience that they had in their life, the thought models that they had going on in their head, the beliefs that they had, the tools that they had at that time, they couldn't have treated you differently as a child. And understanding that sometimes could be helpful. So you can imagine you're going into this dressing room and trying on different thoughts. Or you could imagine that someone is walking around with a platter of thoughts to offer you and you can try them like an appetizer. You can try a bite and see how you like it. Again, you can test those thoughts by how they feel in your body. Do you feel more aggravated when you think it? Do you feel more calm? In the thought model, it shows us how our thoughts create our results. So we know that changing our thoughts will create different results for us. You can think that you're only one model away from the results that you want. All you need to do is find that thought and the emotion that works for you, and you'll have different actions and different results. You're only one model away from the results that you want. Sometimes you'll find a thought that feels quite a bit better to you but there's still a little bit of resistance showing you that you don't fully believe the new thought. Now it's important in order for us to change our results that we have a thought that we actually really believe. So if the thought doesn't feel fully believable to you, you might try a ladder thought or a bridge thought. So that would be a thought that is not quite all the way to where you want to go, but it helps get you there. So if you hate your body, it would be difficult for you to go all the way to loving your body. You could start with the latter thought, I have a body and get comfortable with believing something that's less negative than I hate my body. Another way to use latter thoughts would be to say it's possible and then the thought that you want to believe. So it's possible that I can react neutrally to pain and rewire my brain. It's possible that saying the wrong thing doesn't mean there's something wrong with me. It might be possible that I can feel good about myself without crossing everything off my to-do list. Again, you're the ultimate judge of these thoughts by how they feel in your body. A thought that works well for one person may not necessarily work for another. If you're working on healing your body, you might start with latter thoughts that it's possible that my emotions are increasing my pain. It might be possible that my stress level influences the healing of my body. If you're working on healing your body, it may be hard for your brain to believe that the things you were taught about the physical nature of what's going on are less relevant than the emotional side we're not taught about. So when you have a painful signal in your body, the way you respond to it determines whether your brain is going to focus on it more and create more of it or not. So the best thing you can do when you have pain is to come up with some kind of neutral thought about what's going on. That sends the signal back to your brain that there isn't anything to worry about. We don't need to focus on this. It doesn't have to be the center of your attention and something that you're always looking for. When you're neutral, it sends that signal back to your brain that you don't have to focus on it. And that rewires the brain to actually produce less pain. So coming up with thoughts that serve you, that don't amplify your stress, that don't send you back into fight or flight are absolutely so important for your self-healing journey. 
Joe Dispenza describes a process that I feel like is quite similar to trying on new thoughts. He has you imagine your future self and get into a meditative state where you're actually doing a walking meditation. You're walking as if you are that future self. So the future successful business person that you want to be or the confident person that's the strongest energy in the room, or the person who's not fearful of doing certain activities because of the limitations of their body. You imagine that you are this future person. You walk as if you are them. You talk as if you are them. You dress as if you are them. It's like a method actor. You're getting into this character that you're playing that has these beliefs. And it's like you're trying on this role that you're playing. Another thing I find helpful is having some kind of mantra or affirmation or new thought pattern to practice on purpose. So a simple sentence that you can repeat that has value and meaning to you. Louise Hay has a lot of great affirmations or new thought patterns, depending on what body part you have pain. So for example, for feet, she says that represents our understanding of ourself, our life or others. And the new thought pattern would be my understanding is clear and I am willing to change with the times I am safe. For fatigue, she says, it's resistance, boredom, lack of love for what one does. The new thought pattern, I'm enthusiastic about life and filled with energy and enthusiasm. That sounded weird, enthusiasm. <laughs> so if you find that there are some suggested thought patterns that you find somewhere, or you just think of it yourself, it doesn't really matter. It's what is valuable to you, what helps you, and what feels best in your body. When I'm practicing new thoughts, I like to write them on note cards or post-it notes and put them places where I can see them or have them with me. I also like recording affirmations on my phone, on my voice recorder, so I can hear them played back in my own voice. Another way to try on new thoughts is through mental rehearsal. You could imagine yourself acting in the way that you want to act, thinking in the way you want to think. This can be especially helpful with pain. Maybe there's an activity that you have been fearful of trying because of your pain. So you can imagine yourself trying that activity, trying the running or push-ups or whatever it is that you might be resisting doing in real life. You can start by mentally practicing it, envisioning yourself doing it. And remember, like I said in the last episode with cognitive dissonance, sometimes changing thoughts can actually be psychologically and emotionally stressful. So just know that this process can take work. It's normal for the brain to resist going to new thoughts. It might be frustrating to you when you start to see that you have these thoughts that are causing yourself pain and you want to change them. But remember that your brain is believing them for some reason. There is some positive gain that you get from believing this painful thought. So maybe it's a thought that I'm not worthy of love. And it doesn't seem like that could actually be protecting you or helping you. But if you think about the primitive brain, feeling unworthy of love might keep you safe. It might be painful, but you might not go out of your way to meet new people or be vulnerable. And so it's like the brain is protecting you from these disappointments or uncomfortable emotions by beating yourself up now, believing horrible things about you that are painful, but it feels comfortable to your brain in a way because you have believed it for so long. Even though it's painful, it also feels more comfortable than the unknown or an unbelievable thought. Your brain would rather have a thought that's predictable and painful than a thought that is in the unknown. 
okay, my loves, try this out this week. How can you work on changing your thoughts, trying on new thoughts that might serve you better instead of the old and painful ones? You can check me out on Instagram or my Facebook group or YouTube and connect with me there if you have questions. And check my link. You can sign up for a free 60-minute consult call with me if you want some more specific information on how to apply this in your life. All right. Have a good week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned a little bit about your brain today that helps you in your life like it helped me. Please be sure and subscribe and leave a review. And of course, be sure and share this podcast with someone you know that wants an unstoppable body and mind.